Details are what bring a scene to life. Well, I'm building this little tractor as a great scenic detail for the farm scene on my layout, and I'm starting right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things. And first, I have to answer the question that some of you are asking, what's with the tinfoil behind me? Well, the answer is in one word, aliens. <gasps> Well, I've been working on this farm scene for some time, and I'm going to need some great eye-catching details to really bring this farm to life. Well, what better detail for a farm than an old tractor? So I'm building this little old farm ball tractor in N-Scale to be one of those scenic details, and I'm going to show you how I do it. So let's head on over to the workbench and get started. This video is brought to you by Midwest Model Railroad. With 15,000 square feet of inventory and one-day shipping, whether in person or online, they are your one-stop model railroad shop. MidwestModelRR.com. Link in the description. Let me start by saying a few words about this tractor that I'm building. This kit is a Farmall MTA tractor by International Harvester. It has a row crop front end that is one where the two front wheels are next to one another in what looks like a tricycle kind of arrangement. These tractors were built in the early 1950s. When I was growing up on the farm in the 1970s, these tractors were old, but many of them were still at work on farms in my region. Today, they are highly collectible antique tractors, but some farmers still use them for light duty secondary work on the farm. My kit is a GHQ cast pewter production. The kit only has nine parts, so it's not a complicated kit, but its tiny size presents a bit of a challenge, and gluing cast metal parts has its own challenges as well. I put all of the parts in a jar lid to keep them together and well organized. The instructions are simple, straightforward, and well illustrated. The first step with any cast metal kit is to inspect the parts and file away any flash left from the casting process. File gently as cast pewter is very soft and can easily file away too much very quickly. Some of the parts in this kit are cast on a sprue. These include the front wheels, the steering wheel, exhaust stack, and steering support column. I cleaned each of these parts up as much as possible before removing them from the sprue. The metal is soft enough and thin enough to remove the parts from the sprue with a hobby knife. I tried to cut them out as cleanly as possible so as to have minimal cleanup to do with the file on these tiny parts after they were removed. The steering wheel is the tiniest part in the kit. Fortunately, there are multiples of most of these tiny parts, so if you lose or damage one, you have a backup. For tiny models and parts like this, I often worked on a piece of painter's tape positioned sticky side up on my work surface to keep my parts from flying away. For construction, I used medium viscosity CA because I had it on hand, but I would recommend a thicker gel type CA because of its quicker drying time. I also used an accelerator to speed up the drying time with the CA that I was using. CA dries slower between two metal parts than it does between more porous surfaces like wood or ceramic. I put a drop of CA on a lid to use as a pallet and applied it with an applicator. In my case, an old micro brush handle with the head twisted off. You may note that I use these as glue applicators all the time. Because of the tread shape, the rear wheels are specific to the left and right side of the tractor. To be sure you get these right, a tiny L and R are stamped onto the back of the wheels, but it is so small that I had to use a magnifier to distinguish the L from the R. Once I had, step one is to glue the rear wheels onto the chassis. As with most of the parts in this kit, there is a small mounting pin on the axle and a small mounting dimple on the back of the wheel. I applied a tiny drop of CA to the mounting pin, installed the wheel onto the pin, made sure the wheel was straight, and then applied a drop of the accelerator with a micro brush. I then repeated the process for the other rear wheel. Again, thicker gel type CA would make the positioning process easier. For the front wheels, one is cast with the spindle attached and the other is simply the wheel. 
First, glue the wheel with the spindle to the mounting dimple under the front of the chassis. Let that glue dry completely and then attach the second wheel to the other side of the spindle. Take great care here as it's easy to dislodge the first glue joint when trying to attach the second wheel. I had to glue these parts together a couple of times before I got everything in place properly. I also attached my front wheels slightly turned as I thought it made the model look a little less perfectly posed and thus a little more interesting. If you build this kit, you'll notice I applied the parts slightly out of order. The kit suggested applying the next two parts before the front wheels, but I knew I would damage or detach these tiniest parts if I applied them first, so I waited until all the wheels were attached. The next part is the exhaust stack. Attachment is quite easy here, simply gluing it into the mounting dimple on the top of the hood. The next part, the steering support column, is a little more complicated because it attaches to the floor plate between the engine housing and the seat stand, a pretty small space to work in. Be sure to orient this part correctly as the Y shape at the top must be perpendicular to the hood so the steering column will rest inside it but that is spelled out in the directions. The steering column is a piece of brass wire, but the one supplied is extra long and has to be cut to five millimeters in length. I measured the length and colored the part to be cut off with a Sharpie. I then cut the wire with side cutters, re-measured to make sure that the length was correct. I placed the steering wheel face down to expose the mounting dimple on the back then dipped the steering column into CA and attached it to the steering wheel. When it had set, I attached the end of the steering column to the indicated attachment point on the top of the hood and rested it in the Y in the support column, gluing it in both of these locations. At this point, assembly was complete. Before I move on to painting, let me say if you're enjoying this video and would like to see more Model Railroad tips, tools, and techniques to help you build your dream layout, be sure to subscribe down below and click the little bell icon so you can catch future videos. I allowed all of the glue joints to cure overnight. Then I attached the tractor to a handle with a piece of painter's tape sticky side out for painting. I first painted the entire tractor a dark gray. In this case, Vallejo Air Anthracite Gray, number 71.052. This layer of paint serves as a primer coat and also creates its shadow areas and adds depth to the final color. This is a technique I learned from Boomer of Boomer's Dioramas, a true expert in model building and painting, and I now use this technique on any kind of mechanical model. I painted with an airbrush and built up the color slowly, using several passes to paint the model. Painting too heavily too fast can obliterate the fine detail of a model like this, especially in smaller scales. I continually turn the model to paint it from every conceivable angle to get paint into all of the nooks and crannies. It's especially important with this dark undercoat to paint from below the model to get the shading underneath the details. I let the undercoat dry for a few hours and then I applied the red primary coat. For this, I used Vallejo Air Red, number 71.003. Here, my goal wasn't to match the original Farmall Red exactly. At the era that I model, this tractor would be 60 plus years old. On a farm, it would either be faded and very rusty, or it would be repainted for farm use, or it would be restored as a collectible item. I'm probably looking at a model on an old family farm, so an old family tractor that's had a coat of paint sometime over the years, but it's not exceedingly rusted, but also not pristine in condition either. And this time I generally painted from a slightly elevated angle pointing slightly down. This allowed the dark gray paint to remain on the bottom of many of the details, providing that shadow effect. This really works well for enhancing the 3D effect of fine details. The gray also helped the front radiator grill to really pop. Again, be sure to apply paint in several light passes to avoid pooling that will obliterate the detail and ruin the model. Also, shoot the model from every possible angle to get the paint evenly applied on all the surfaces. 
When the red had dried, I hand painted the tires, seat, steering wheel, all black. I didn't want a stark, flat black, so I mixed a ratio of one part black to three parts anthracite gray to give a slightly more subtled, aged look to these black parts. I used an 18 aught spotting brush for these details. The very bottom of the chassis didn't get any paint initially, so I painted this with a black mixture as well. Finally, the exhaust stack I painted by hand using Vallejo Steel number 71.065. These tractors originally had silver rims on the rear wheels as well, but that detail is so tiny that it would be nearly impossible to paint neatly, and many of these tractors that have been repainted over the years have had the rims painted all red anyway, so I'm going with the all red wheels. To add a bit of accent highlight, I dry brushed just a hint of white onto the wheel treads and some of the hood details. This really makes the small details pop. This is a tiny little tractor, but I really like the way it turned out. I haven't decided exactly where I'm going to use this tractor, but I'll probably park it visibly just inside the barn on my farm. But it'll make a nice, interesting detail in my farm scene wherever I put it. So to see more of this farm scene build and other great model railroad content, check out the links on your screen. Be sure and see my Amazon pick of the week, my Micromark discount code, and other great links in the description down below. And join me on Fridays as I bring you even more great model railroad videos. And I'll see you on the next video. Tin Lizzie?